Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. The episode is Restaurants Hawaii, and my name is Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. I'd also like to introduce Siobhan Garcia, our Executive Assistant. Siobhan, why don't you introduce our guest today? Hi, yes, thank you. Uh, today we have Tom Jones. He is the president and co-owner of Kiyotaku Japanese Restaurants. Welcome, Tom. Good morning, everyone. Hi, today we're, we're answering all of your questions in regards to Oahu's Mayor Rick Blangiardi's emergency order number 2021-11. The city and county of Honolulu will be requiring employees and customers of certain businesses to have proof of COVID-19 vaccinations to enter. On Oahu, the guest slash patron mandate is called Safe Access Oahu Program. Under this new program, it requires anyone visiting indoor gym facilities, indoor um, entertainment, indoor recreation facilities, arcades, museum, bars, and restaurants, they will now need to show a proof of vaccination with an ID or a negative COVID-19 test within the past 48 hours before you enter. This Oahu mandate begins on Monday, September 13th, which is five days away. So that's why this is a timely discussion. We'll only be discussing the guest patron part of this emergency order as we only have 30 minutes. The other portion of the order, which is in regards to employee vaccinations, for those questions, please reach out to your human resources department as that is probably the best resource for your business. So first, um, I would like to ask Tom Jones if he'd like to do a statement first before we start going through all the questions, Tom, about this mandate set on Oahu. Sure, Cheryl. Thank you very much for having me. Um, you know, I, I operate four restaurants here in, in Honolulu. I've been in the industry my entire life and our whole focus is always about the customer and and creating a really hospital environment of you know hosp not hospital yeah a hospital environment not a hospital environment a hospitable environment hospitality environment for them to dine in we want to keep them out of the hospitals and so um you know this is a real challenge because we're faced with this you know global um, epidemic or pandemic and um you know it's interesting here in Hawaii because we have been, uh, you know, somewhat free of, you know, what happened in the mainland a year ago. And so we were really, really fortunate. And I think in, in some ways, um, you know, maybe we let our guard down as a, as a, as a community. And now we're faced with, you know, what uh, the mainland, uh, our mainland counterparts were faced with a year ago. So we've really got to adjust and it's a challenge. It's a challenge for us. It's also a challenge for our leaders. They're faced with, you know, hospitals over, you know, burgeoning with, with, uh, you know, COVID patients, they regular, you know, patients can't get in to get the, the normal care that they need. And so they're faced with trying to manage that uh, for the community as a whole. And of course we have ourselves and we have our, you know, our customers, the individuals out there, the community at large who have, you know, a variety of different, you know, um, opinions and positions on vaccination and masking and, you know, uh, testing and so forth. So it's a really challenging uh, position that we're all in right now. And I think we all really need to try to do the best, uh, have an open mind, uh, you know, uh, consider the feelings of others and then work, do our best to work our way through this. And uh, now we have this this mandate, which is going to be really, really challenging for everyone. So uh, let's get down to business and start answering some questions for Thank our you. members. Thank you, Tom. And, you know, this this emergency order was announced at a press conference last Monday, so August 30th. So, Tom, as it's only been a week and one day, we're also, you know, going through the process of learning all the different nuances of this emergency order. I'd like to have all of our members to go to the one Oahu, that's mm -hmm. one Oahu.org website. On that website, you will see all the frequently asked questions. So your answers may be there. And if not, then you call 808-768-CITY or 808-768-2489. So please call that number and ask your questions. 
on that website is also active the business attestation um, form. And that form needs to be filled out by the restaurateurs so that the city knows that you're a restaurant and that you're now registered in the Safe Access Oahu program. So Tom, let's discuss some of the questions that our mm -hmm. restaurateurs has sent in and all the different scenarios that are re revolve around restaurants because you have some restaurants that have dine-in, some restaurants that have dine-in and you know a, a, a lanai or an open seating area. Some people are just in open seating areas. So full vaccination, first question. Full vaccination, according to the website, is two weeks after the second dose or in the case of the Johnson & Johnson, two weeks after the single dose vaccination. So if a patron comes to the door and they've not been within that two week window, what do we do? Well, then we'd have to ask them for a, uh, you know, a test result. Yes. And, and, yes. and so the, the, the key here, I think in, in this situation in order to reduce issues at the door is to make sure that um, on our websites, um, you know, our cashiers or people who are answering the phone, our receptionists are trained to ensure you know, or ask the customers, you know, if you haven't been, uh, you know, vaccinated fully for at least two weeks, make sure you bring a, a, a you know, a valid, a negative test that's uh, within 48 hours old. Very good, Tom. And, and we spoke about what you're going to be doing at your restaurants, which I think a lot of restaurants are going to be doing the same thing, you know, as it comes to the lunch hour or the dinner hour, the lines at the front door do get long. So do you want to kind of go through your process of what you're going to be doing at your restaurants? Sure. Um, I, again, I think the, the most important thing is to get out and, and let the customers know in advance. Um, a lot of customers, though, you know, they, they come to your restaurant, they walk in or they drive in and they haven't been to your website. They don't know that. So I think it's important for restaurateurs to figure out how can they communicate what the new rules are and what and how they're dealing with those rules at their restaurant somewhere outside of the front door of the restaurant, either at the, um, you know, the parking lot, you know, when the people pull in or um, near the front door uh, before the crowd gathers so that there's, you know, we don't want to create, um, you know, uh, social distancing issues right at the entries to our restaurants. So what we're considering doing at Gyotaku right now is having a banner, uh, you know, that explains the basic details, what they are, and, and that our customers should have that ready. And we're thinking that it may be better for us to tell the customers what they need to have, but don't check them until they're actually at the table. So make sure they're aware 100% of what they need. And, and when the host uh, or hostess seats them says, do you have all your paperwork ready? Are you good? And they'll say yes. And then we'll get them into the restaurant and then we'll turn that process over to the servers, which means of course we need to train them as well. But uh, that will help us prevent backlogs in the front. And um, it'll also give the servers an opportunity to, you know, be a little more hospitable and provide additional service to the guest. Hopefully we won't have situations where we have to escort people out, we'll see. That's, no, that's very good, Tom, because you know we're in the business of hospitality, as you mentioned, we're here to right. serve our, our patrons and this mandate you know, for us, we, we're trying to get through it and the best and most tactful way possible with customer service always in mind. So. So according to the website, what is not accepted, it, according to the mandate, is any um, out of country, it has to be a United okay. States administered COVID vaccine card. So Tom, if a, if a patron comes in and they say, you know, we're not from the United States, but we've been vaccinated in, you know, Japan or Italy or wherever other country, Canada, but we have that COVID card, is that acceptable? Unfortunately, it's not. And, and so uh, at that point, again, our, our hospitality skills come into play. We should be able to, you know, it, it's always better to tell guests what we can do for them as opposed to tell them what we're not going to do for them. So I think it's, it's really critical at that point to be able to offer some, you know, takeout and you may want to be prepared um, with some special quick to prepare takeout meals for those guests. And or if, you, if you're fortunate enough to have some outdoor dining, um, you know, um, at or adjacent to your, your operation, then you might want to consider, you know, offering them to, to dine outside. Now I can see Tom putting a tent in his parking lot. <laughs> right. <We made> <laughs> so acceptable proof um, 
of uh, vaccination, which is the COVID right. vaccination card, which is right. from the um, FDA. It's a US FDA COVID card plus an ID that has Correct. the same name is the proof. Now, Siobhan, you want to take the next question? Well, actually, quick, all, all of that information and the samples are on the oneoahu.org website. So, you know, if you if you need tools to understand what's acceptable and what's not, you can go to the website and there's pictures of all that. You can download it, you can print it, share it with your team members. That great training tool. Don't overlook that. Perfect, perfect. Siobhan? Yes, so the proclamation states that children under 12 are exempt from the vaccination mandate. Um, how will restaurants be expected to verify a child's age, considering most 12 year olds uh, don't carry any sort of identification? Right. Well, I, again, I, I think we we'll go back to the, to the mayor's press conference a week ago. He said that he was going to be trusting, you know, the general population to to follow directions and to cooperate. And so, yeah, we don't have ID cards for seven, eight, nine, ten year olds. Um, I think that that's pretty much going to be on the honor system. Um, there are the occasional five foot ten, you know, eight, you know, ten or twelve years old old kids. There are some some tall ones, but I think we just need to, um, you know, to trust in that case, trust the customers, um, and you know, and and you know. Uh, just, you know, take them at their word. I agree. Yeah. Of course, if they have a beard, I'm not so <laughs> sure about that. <laughs> but, you know, well, we have to do, we have to do our best. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one of the other questions that we have um, been asked is that the penalty listed may include jail time. So in this case, who is the person that is accepting the responsibility of this for this penalty? Uh, from what I understand, as I read it, it seems to be the business, not necessarily the individual employee. So it's up to us as employers to uh, train our staff and to protect you know, them and to also too, to protect our business as well. You know, as I would say, like, as we mentioned earlier, you know, when in doubt, um, err on the side of it would not necessarily be acceptable because if you didn't, then you you could be held liable. So the the go to option is always takeout, you know, for customers. So, you know, we can do something for you for takeout. Um, I do think that um, you know it, it's critical for us to make a best face best faith effort, you know, to to do that. But if it, it doesn't meet the criteria, then I think unfortunately we're going to have to let the customers know that we're not able to serve them. And um, do we know who will be enforcing this mandate? Um, well, the, the, this is a, a, a city and county mandate. So the uh, mayor has basically uh, two tools at his disposal. He has the police department, the city and county police department, and he also has the liquor commission um, inspectors. And it's my understanding that, you know, that they will use them, um, you know, uh, so I think that that uh, restaurants uh, and bars, you know, that have liquor licenses can expect uh, the the liquor inspectors to be out, you know, checking on them. I know that there have been restaurants that were cited for staying open past uh, ten o'clock in the past, um, and or were cited or warned um, that they may be um, not complying with the social distancing or capacity, um, uh, you know, limits that were set in the past. So. In this case, we may find, uh, you know, them doing that. So uh, I don't think that 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 patrons will see police um, officers. I mean, not pardon me, restaurant tours will see police officers at their restaurants, unless someone were to call the police and say they felt that a restaurant was in violation. So again, your best defense is a good offense. You know, if you're complying with the laws and you're doing your best faith effort to 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 um, you know, follow the, the precautions and or if a guest complains to you that they feel that something is unsafe and you're able to address that with your great customer service skills, then your likelihood of having uh, police coming to your restaurant is going to be significantly reduced. And I think that's the most important thing to, to think about is how can we reduce the likelihood that that's going to be happening um, and not you know, be um, you know, confrontational uh, with guests like that. I think that's great advice. Um, so will your guests be able to submit their COVID vaccination card um, prior to their reservation? 
I think that's up to each and every restaurant. Um, restaurants are going to be doing a lot of, you know, there's going to be for every restaurant, there's going to be a different way of handling that. I think there's a lot of creativity out there. Um, as we saw when COVID first hit a year ago, plexiglass was flying up all over the place. And we were doing all these things to, to, you know, to adjust and to accommodate our guests. And so some restaurants can and probably will be able to do that. Um, I'm sure there's going to be apps popping up that will help, you know, restaurants do that. Um, but I think it's up to each and every restaurant, you know, to figure that out as long as they meet the minimum requirements. Um, so um, if they want to, you know, have email address, send it here, do this or that, I think they can do that. Um, there there uh, is a wellness app that um, I think um, it's wellness.org. Is that right? What wellness tracker.org, I think is the, is or dot com is is a is a tool that uh, is offered for free that people can use for their employees. And I, I'm, it's my understanding that they're trying to come up with something that may work for guests as well. Um, but again, I think a lot of our guests are very um, reluctant to share their um, medical information, you know, their vax card or their test in a digital environment where it may be able to be used in some other way at some later later point. So in some cases, low tech is often the easiest way to go. Um, so again, it, that's a, a decision that each, each restaurateur will make for themselves. Perfect. Um, so back to a question that we've been asked from some of the um, restaurants is the question about if they have outdoor dining, um, but they have a space where, you know, inside that they will have to walk through first. Um, and being that outdoors isn't necessarily covered under this, what what would be your suggestion that they should do, um, being that they're going to be in the restaurant for a period of time, possibly passing through? Yeah, well, the, the, the mayor said that if you're in the restaurant for less than 15 minutes, then you don't need to be, um, you don't need to produce a vax, you know, card or a, um, a testing, you know, receipt, a negative, you know, test receipt. So um, if, if somebody was walking through, you know, the front door and going out to the outdoor dining on the outside and then passing on the way back, I think that would probably, in, in, in the spirit of the law, meet the requirement um, of, uh, you know, uh, outdoor dining. The question, I think, really becomes, and, and again, this is on a case-by-case -case basis, what constitutes outdoor dining? And so if you have a place with a very large window um, that, you know, that's open to the, you know, the fresh air, that may not quite make it. But if you've got one full wall or two full walls completely exposed to the outside, um, you know, or on a lanai type of, a, of an arrangement, then I think you'd be pretty safe in, in um, designating that as outdoor dining. Um, if you have any question at all, again, I would refer to, you know, oneoahu.org. Thank you again for that, Tom. Yep. Cheryl? Yes, do you have any other questions, Siobhan? Uh, no, I think we'll turn it over to you. Okay, good. So, so Tom, as you know, you know, restaurateurs are entrepreneurs and they are trying to figure this all out. Many of the restaurants who say, you know, they're in a zip code area that is 50% or less vaccinated, a zip mm -hmm. code area, you know, that don't, that they don't have a following of a lot of people who have been vaccinated. What is your recommendation to them? Wow, that, that's a real challenge. I'm very fortunate. Yeah, I'm really fortunate. Um, our vaccination rate is at about 95 to 98 percent right now, so we're we're you know have a, a relatively easy time of it. We do have a couple of very important key employees that aren't vaccinated. They're considering it right now. Um, you know, my recommendation, you know, there is, um, and and I think it's the same. You know, it's like we have family members, you know, sometimes that aren't vaccinated either, um, or close friends. And I, I think that confrontation is really, um, you know, not very productive in these situations. Listening, asking questions, finding out, you know, what are the underlying reasons for people's positions on why they may not be vaccinated, I think is really important. And then, um, you know, uh, thoughtfully explaining the benefits of, of, you know, being vaccinated, not only on, for the individual, but for their family, for their friends, and for the community at large, um, I, I think um, oftentimes can be helpful. Some people do have very, very strong feelings about this. And the stronger the feelings, the less likely we are going to be able to change them. So it, given that, I don't think it makes much sense to make an enemy, you know, um, you know, out of that situation. Um, at least we can be friendly over it and, and handle the situation in a, in a friendly way. 
uh, I'm, I'm sure that's not much consolation for a, you know, a restaurant that might lose three, four, five, six, or more, you know, really key employees. But this is a temporary measure that we're going through right now, and hopefully we'll be able to get through it. I would also, you know, um, you know, challenge those restaurants that that are in that situation to really rethink, you know, what they're doing, you know, how they're doing their business and what they're doing, and figure out ways to be able to, um, you know, help those employees, uh, you know. Uh, get their testing taken care of. So if they're, you know, and wearing, you know, like maybe a higher quality mask at our restaurants, we've, we've insisted on uh, N95 masks for those employees that aren't going to get vaccinated. There's some inconveniences. They can't necessarily eat in, with the other employees or things of that nature. Um, and those may, in, in some cases, be a, a, a reason for them to go ahead and decide to get vaccinated. Um, but restaurateurs can can really, you know, amp up their takeout, you know, sales. I mean, do a lot of other things, I think, to really try to compensate um, for that. So I would recommend to to double down on your creativity, um, you know, work it out, you know, and, and, and just do the best that you can. You're so right, Tom, because right now the restaurants that are located in, you know, the low vaccinated zip codes, you know, and, you know, I have one of them. And so we really moved to the takeout model. So mm -hmm. I get it, Tom, you know, we're just trying to stay afloat until we can just weather out this pandemic, right? right? Men, one thing many, that, oh, go ahead. Sorry, no, you go ahead first. Well, I was going to say, one thing that really hasn't been addressed is, is if you've had COVID and you have COVID antibodies, but you haven't, you know, been vaccinated, you know, and so that that I think, you know, I think the mayor and 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 the governor need to be figuring out a way to address that because people should be able to get, you know, um, you know, a not a vaccination card, but an antibody card that shows that they've been exposed, and that technically should qualify as vaccination. And we've been trying to figure that out on our side. So that's something to think about it too. That's a group of people that we really haven't addressed at this point. And they may fall into that area of not wanting to get vaccinated because I had it already. And, you know, and so proof of, of a prior um, exposure, um, you know, uh, might, might qualify as a vax card. Exactly. We've, we have mentioned that in other discussions before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the state, the governor, the mayors are all trying to get us to that, you know, 80% of the eligible, right, that are right. able to get vaccinated mm -hmm. to, to get the dose. And so, yes, that's a good, good suggestion. So, Tom, we just have a few, you know, like another five minutes. Is there anything, because I do have more questions, but is there anything you want to wrap up with? Because I want to give you an opportunity to, you know, give that that um, sage advice that you have as a, as a restaurateur of how many decades to our restaurants who are really trying to figure it out. Many of them, Tom, you know, in 2020, they, it was just devastating for them. So even though we had a little bit of surge during the summer, you know, that didn't make up for the whole 2020 that they did lose money. One third right. of our restaurants received the restaurant revitalization and that other two thirds, Tom, did not. And right. so those restaurants who are still financially, you know, struggling, and then they have this new mandate on top of it, and they're in a zip code area that is a low vaccinated, zip code area, and you know, they have to rely on takeout, but is there any advice, any sage advice that you can give those restaurateurs? Well, just, just real quick on the financial side, um, you know, uh, getting your PPP forgiveness, if you were fortunate enough to get PPP, getting your PPP forgiveness on PPP one covered, and then applying for your employee, you know, employee retention credit could provide a lot of, you know, cash flow to you right this minute. And so if you haven't done that, do that right away, because it could be a make or break situation for you. And then there's PPP two and, and the ERC for 2021 as well. So th that's financial advice. Um, but again, I, I think that it, it you know, we've been in the hospitality business our whole lives. I got, you know, I started when I was 14. I'm 66 next, you know, tomorrow, actually. And um, and so I've been at this for a long, a long, long time. Um, you know, it's all about people and, and we're in the people business. So, you know, it's a lot of people, our employees serving a lot of people, our customers. And so it's a people business. So rely on your human relation instincts um, and skills in this situation when you're talking to your customers and your employees and hopefully not 
city officials who may be talking to you about your business. But it's all about having a positive and cooperative, you know, of, you know, um, mindset about you know dealing with these things. Be optimistic. Be creative, um, and and you'll be able to get through this. Hopefully, there's a lot of resources out there. And again, go to you know the uh, the website. Uh, what is it? Uh, Oneoahu.org. Is that right? Yes, oneoahu.org. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and there's a lot of resources there as well. And of course, if you get in a real gym, you can call Cheryl or I. Because <laughs> she's wincing, like, don't call me. But no, we're the HRA is here to help restaurant owners, whether you're a member or not. We're here to help the the, the restaurant community at large. So if you get in the jam, give us a buzz. We'll 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 try to do the best we can to help you out. Which is so true, Tom. You know, through this whole pandemic, Tom and I started together. He was the chairman. He has been a past three time, right, Tom? Chairman Actually four, four times <laughs> over the many there, years chairman of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. And when we started this whole process together, Tom, mm -hmm. in early 2020, right? right? And, you know, little did we know that 19 yeah. months later. Yeah, this is a once in a lifetime uh, issue for us, you know, once in a hundred year type of event. And so it's just challenging us at every corner, but, you know, and, and there have been casualties in, in our industry and I feel really, you know, bad for, for the restaurants that we're not able to make it. But when you look around, people are still opening other restaurants. So there's a lot of optimism and a lot of skill, talent, creativity, um, and willpower. And that's really key too. And I'll also say, if you are a restaurant that is fortunate enough to be doing fairly well, you know, think about our frontline workers. Um, I'm going to be working on, you know, I talked to the lieutenant governor's office this weekend. We're going to start working on ways that we can start providing meals to our frontline workers. Um, they need our help more than ever right now. And so those of us that are able to, um, we should, you know, do that. And also, too, if there's anybody listening that, that can afford to help a restaurant do that, buy some bentos and donate them, then that's a great way to, to help our industry as well. So uh, we're here for the community um, as much as we possibly can. Uh, we're feeding Hawaii's people um, for hundreds of years, and we're going to keep on doing it. And you're so right, Tom. You know, we appreciate our community support. You know, all of the support that our community has been doing, which is, you know, ordering takeout if you can't dine in. Mm -hmm. ordering gift cards, you know, right. for a graduation or a birthday. I, I just did that. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's the best thing to do because right. we want to see our favorite restaurants stay around. So I have I have a one minute warning coming up from Eric. <laughs> so in closing, as a Wahoo's restaurants prepare for the new emergency order, please go to oneoahu.org for any questions or call 808-768-CITY. You will find all the answers and to your questions that you need and get the resources because this mandate gets in effect in five days, September 13th. As always, this is Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association, and we are the voice of Hawaii's food service and restaurant industry. Thank you. Aloha.